All right, everyone, welcome back to the Travel Path Podcast. I'm Tyler Hespel. I have Jeff Chai with me. If you missed his first episode, part one, he talked about his incredible story where he quit his job he didn't like because he just wanted to get out and travel. He works full-time as a trucker. Um, anybody who's who wants to travel is not sure exactly how to do it, doesn't want to work remotely or not sure how to save up for a long vacation, definitely tune in. It's something I didn't really think too much of, but I learned a ton listening to it, so definitely take a listen. Um, part two is called Travel Tips. This is a segment where we have the guests come back and talk about one destination they know best. So, Jeff, what's the destination today? Franconia, New Hampshire. Franconia, it's New a, Hampshire. It's a beautiful area. It's a good getaway. It's for everybody involved. Like you're, uh, you know, you could take anyone. They have cottages. I, we go to the Franconia Inn, and uh, it's a beautiful place. Cell service is a little lacking up in that area, but we like that. We put our phones away and just enjoy life. Great things to see and do up there. Can I say I've been there yet? And how much time have you spent there? Uh, actually, we go just about every year. My family actually, we have uh, even my parents back in the day started going there, and they're the ones that actually opened our eyes to it. But now, as adults, even my sister and I, we take our families. We've been going for a long time. Uh, probably every year, somebody from my family has been there for at least twenty years or so. I would say now it's just one of those locations that you just find a lot of peace, relaxation, and and rest, which we all need. Sure. And having the no service definitely helps out with that. Sometimes you need to it put does. your phone it away. Does. And, it yeah. does. There are some areas because they have Lincoln nearby. Uh, that, that's a town, bigger town in that. Is state. it near Woodstock, the Woodstock area? Or where geographically whereabouts is? Further north, and it's up near Lincoln is the biggest town, I think, yeah. that they have up there. I imagine it's a big ski town in the wintertime. Oh, they have is skiing. That... But it's also big in the summer uh, for hiking because you know, they do have big mountains, you know, like the White Mountains. But yeah, skiing, gondolas, they have all kinds of stuff you can do. Kayaking. They even have gliders that you can rent. Is uh, that when you just jump off the mountain with a like a hang glider? No, no, no. It's uh, actually a, a, a plane, but uh, it just floats. I, I, I don't know. It has no motor. And like you throw it like no no you get in it and you oh. i think they call them gliders uh, i'm pretty sure they call them gliders. probably yeah yeah and uh you just fl like float <laughs> until you land i i do believe they take somebody you got to go with somebody i i'm not saying you go by yourself but uh yeah they have those right outside of the franconia inn right out in the front in the field there. sounds like you sign a waiver for that yeah, i mean <laughs> yeah you know a lot of areas though even when you do the hiking uh, yeah. they have the lost river up there and the uh the flume and if you're a nature lover, you'll see a lot of animals. They even have moose, uh, you know, bus trips that go to look for moose. That's the one thing we didn't see on our road trip. We saw you know, elk, plenty of elk, black bear. We never saw a moose. What else for wildlife? Have you seen black bear up there and oh, bald yeah. eagle? and Black, yeah, tons of birds. They have all kind of loon, bald eagles. They have a nice lake, the Echo Lake. So, you know, you can do fishing, I think, there. You can definitely take out kayaks. They got paddle boats. And that's a nice um, for scenery. Again, if you're a nature lover, it's you know, or you're one of those people that just needs to get away from it all. I'm telling you, this is the place for you because I, I hate to sound like a commercial right now. Do they have a good mix of like day hikes, shorter hikes, as well as backpacking and overnight oh, hikes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in New Hampshire's pretty famous for the backpacking oh, scene. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, they got they got they got them all. They they even have caverns they can walk through at at the Lost River. I mean, even crawl. They, it's a great place to bring kids. They say. Yeah. You know, because the kids like to go in and, you know, hunt around and stuff. Because a lot of the parents, they get their backs start breaking and stuff when they try to get into some of these places that they call a cavern. They have good food up there. What are some of your favorite trails, hiking trails? I like the flume. It's called the, the Great Flume, I think it's called. Uh, but that one always gets me because it's a nice, it's a big loop. I think it's a five-mile loop. And uh, you can cut it short if you wish to. They even have, I think, uh, some sort of transportation that can catch you if you're you know, halfway up and you don't think you can make it back. <laughs> if you need to cut it short and walk back down, cut it short and walk, you know, I think it's interesting that, you know, we're, there's like all these hikers on these trails and, and you always, there's like this one roadway and you always see these people get brought down and I'm like, come on, you know, like you gotta, you're out here for a reason, aren't you? Some like people underestimate it. Yeah, no, they do. <laughs> they don't, they don't understand their own ability, I guess. That's my favorite place to go when I'm up there is I do like that flume and the Echo Lake is nice too because you get out on those paddle boats or even the uh, kayaks it's just nice to be with your lady or family even in the summertime hiking wildlife fall time obviously foliage oh, hiking yeah, foliage, as well in the yeah. springtime and then the winter time you've got a big ski town what time of year do you typically go we like i like to go in the summer with my girl yeah because we're hikers we, we like to hike we, we just like getting out and, and just walking and uh you know breathing the fresh air in the winter we we've gone they got sleigh rides and stuff if there's snow 
I don't know if we're ever going to get snow again, though. That was fun. You know, they, they do dress it up and make it nice for winter. And there are things you can do. Christmas like decorations and downtown, all that for uh, the kids. Yeah, downhill. Yeah, yeah, they got decorations. They got the downhill skiing, cross-country skiing that you can do. But again, snow has been... It's been a little rough lately. Yeah, we went every year's hit or miss. We went to New Hampshire a while ago to Mount Washington. I think that's New Hampshire. Yeah. And we uh we went to go rent snowmobiles and there wasn't any snow yet. That was a Christmas Christmas day. We went a couple of years after that and there was a ton of snow. So it yeah, it's always yeah. it's yeah, always back it and forth. Uh, yeah. I just remember every Christmas it was a white Christmas. Uh, you know, like I said, I've lived in Connecticut my yeah. whole life. And I just think it's funny that sometimes, yeah, you don't even have snow by Christmas. Yeah. If somebody wants to come visit Franconia, how much time would you recommend they spend there to get the full experience? We'll go for three days sometimes. Sometimes we'll stay for like a week or two. It, it all depends, you know, how much hiking you want to do, how much you want to see, even going on Echo Lake and such. I do like that it's not, a, it doesn't have to be a week thing. It can be a long weekend. Mm-hmm. Or even sometimes we like to go between like Monday and Wednesday. In terms of where you actually stay, are you in a camper, hotel, Airbnb? Oh, no, it's a it's an inn. It's okay. an inn. So they have separate rooms. They even have a restaurant that if you want to have your breakfast and dinner is there, you can put that into your whole total as far as the stay at Franconian. We usually actually like to go visit some of the restaurants around town. Usually we'll get like the breakfast plan. Because we will eat breakfast there, but then we hit the road and we'll do dinner somewhere else, wherever we head. Any favorite breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert spots you want to give away? Well, we love Gordy's for romance, and then uh, the Common Man. The Common Man is the one where if you it's if you're bringing a family, that's where you want to go because it is loud in the Common Man. Yeah. The Common Man is a very loud place, lots of activity and action going on. Good food though for a relatively cheap price. Gordy's is more of your. Uh, if you want to have a romantic evening with your lady and you want to spend a little more. Awesome. Breakfast, hotel, lunch, common man, dinner, Gordy's. Any dessert spots? <laughs> well, desserts actually, they, they actually have a lot of places like bakeries up there. So they actually do have some pl- nice little like mom and pop joints. Uh, I can't name one in particular because we actually like stopping at a lot of them. Mm-hmm. They have like fudges and, you know, they, they give out some stuff that are, it's all homemade. But yeah, they got some good desserts. I mean, we usually take an apple pie home or something, you know. Nice. So no shortage of good food. Cool. I know you mentioned it's kid friendly. They have, you know, like the flume you had mentioned, and then there's a Christmas time decorations. They have things to yeah, do. Sleigh rides and. Yep. Do you see a lot of pets? Is it dog friendly area? That I, I honestly can't say I've ever seen a pet. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I don't think they they allow pets. Yeah. They do have new ownership though. That just happened in the last year or so. So I'm not sure if they changed that. Yeah. But it's weird though because they have a horse stable right outside. Mm. The, the end so you can go or so I, I don't know why you wouldn't be able to bring a pet they also have um so you can stay in the inn which has rooms and then a restaurant they got a fireplace you can sit and read there's a game room for the kids which is nice and it's a smaller place there's not like hundreds of visitors at the same time it's more like uh, i think they have maybe 20 to 30 rooms i want to oh, say it's a, it's a big and, end yeah yeah and they're um you know each room is actually uh different price basically based on what you want out of the room you know they have one with a jacuzzi each room is a little different which i we like that too we try every room every time we go and stuff tennis courts are over there though if you want to do some tennis they have a nice little sitting room for people who like to read books in front of the fireplace type stuff uh they do have a nice porch where you can sit and it it is small if you do try to make reservations you're going to want to call ahead though because in the summer especially uh from july to august it it gets packed like you got to call ahead to even try to get in that place at least in the old days. Now, they do have new ownership. We're still kind of feeling our way around this new ownership. Yeah. They actually try to get people up there in the winter, which is why they've tried things like the sleigh rides and such. Is it like a log cabin feel? Is it, it used to be like a big farm, or was it always an inn? I don't know what it used to be in the old days, but it's not a log cabin. I mean, it, it's a nice, it's an older looking place. It looks like a big house that was on a lot of land, so it could have been yeah. a farmland, I'm guessing. They have walkways right outside on the property. They have a in-ground pool and such, you know. You can go hiking right on their property and such. Um, and that's where their horse trails are too. Are those trails that you mentioned previously, is that all on the Franconia Inn's property, the flume and the no, lake? No, no, no. Okay, you see, so that's... That's, that's, that's why we love it though. Again, we're hikers, my, my lady and I. We, we love hiking. Yeah, if you want to stay right there, have your breakfast and just relax by the pool during the day and go for a hike, you can. They don't necessarily name those trails. They do their horse uh, back riding right there too. Like I said, my parents still going there in their 70s. Yeah. I think it's a good place for all ages, really. Sure. Are there campgrounds nearby? I'd imagine there are. There must be. 
I mean, I can't say I look for them, but I'm sure there are because there's a lot of wide open spaces up yeah. there, you know. And and like you know, going back to your question, yeah, the flume they have named trails nearby that aren't on their property per se. So the flume, the Lost River, great place to go. Echo Lake, you got to make a little drive, but it's not like you're not driving forever. You, know? you might have answered this question already, but three things to do in or around the Franconia Inn. Well, the flume is, is a, the number one, I think, for everybody. I think everybody should do the flume. They should try to make the entire hike, too. They have benches all the way throughout the whole uh, thing because people do have to sit down because it's, it's a lot of uphill. You know, it's a lot of uphill, but it is nice. They have uh, where wolves used to den. Uh, Ever seen any wolves up there? Not yet. Yeah. Thank God. You know, I don't I don't ever want to run into a wolf myself, but uh, yeah, I'm good with that. Moose, moose was enough for me. We, yeah. We ran into one of those on the street driving one night and uh, yeah. How far I, away were you? I guess you we were driving. We thought we were going to get lifted up by the guy's horns and tossed on the side of the road. When they get in rut season, that, that's... Uh, yeah, they don't mess around. Yeah, that's fall, I think. Yeah, I've not seen one. I've seen elk, and I know they're bigger they than elk. Big. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're nine feet tall, some of them. It's like, holy moly. Yeah. If you don't want to chance seeing them by yourselves, trying to find them yourself, which you can do, they do have the tours that will put out the meat, we think, three or four hours ahead of time, and then, you know, you will see. But, yeah, we've done those, too. We did, we did, we have actually paid and, and take, the, luck easy, take the easy route. Because you see, because uh, every time they stop, amazingly enough, that there's one sitting there, you know, which is why we know it's a little bit of a setup. It, but at least you get to see moose, you know? Because they are a rare sighting, right? I mean, it's not like you're guaranteed to see one if you spend a week in your name. Right. Like, my family has been up there for, you know, like I said, every year for a long time now. I would say we've seen on our own, Maybe six. It's not like we run into them every year, but they are up there, you know, so. Two things that they're not necessarily complaints about Franconia Inn, but they're two things that somebody might not consider that you might want to prepare them for. Oh, definitely the phone reception. Yep. You're, you're not going to, unless they put in a new tower somewhere up there, you're not going to get good phone reception up there. I mean, you can make phone calls. I don't, don't feel like you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere, but you will have to like find like their town services and stuff. Do they have Wi-Fi in the whole inn or local coffee shops that have Wi-Fi? Yeah, they do have Wi-Fi in the areas that you can uh, connect to. Um, I don't know if they have any inn, though. I don't know. If I... I've been to inns before in the north, and they say they have Wi-Fi, and sometimes it's not yeah, the best Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you have all your conversations that are business, you know, yeah. taken care of before you go on your vacation. That's all I'm going to say on this trip. You know, you want to have plenty of changes of clothes. The walks, you know, you, you sweat. Then you got the... Uh, you never know what you're going to run into as far as, you know, sap or, I mean, there's all, even when you get on the horses, you know, like you want to have plenty, plenty of clothing, uh, on the trip, uh, Echo Lake too, you know, you want to be prepared. Take, you learned that the hard way. Didn't have enough clothes the first time. And well, yeah. Cause like you, everything you do is like, you know, you want to change. Kind yeah. of. I'm one of those people, you know, I, are there laundry uh, facilities there? No, no, they don't really have laundry. I think they have a laundromat, yeah. but it's in town. Like, you got to drive down the road. But, you know, that's about that. I don't think that's about it, though. Awesome, man. Know, other than that. The yeah. reception is the worst thing, I would say. Yeah. I can't say too many negatives about the place, you know, other than the reception. Sure. You know, that's what you want to prepare for. But <laughs> At the same time, you're not going there to work. So it's, right. it's, it's, it's no, a that, curse and a blessing That's at the why same we time. love it. Yeah. yeah. It, you really are trying to get away from it and just be at peace and with nature type thing you know I, I know some people aren't into that but that that's what we like last question what is the one thing you cannot leave the franconi in without doing there's so much to do yeah. and i really feel like that's part of the whole experience why we mm -hmm. keep getting dragged like we keep wanting to go so there isn't really one thing that yeah. brings us back to that place it's like everything and we like doing it over and over and over again it's hard it's hard to really pinpoint one thing well that is a good enough answer for me that sounds like an awesome place a franconia inn the in franconia new hampshire inn, franconia again franconia i have new hampshire, yeah. not been to it haven't heard of it hope you guys learned a ton listening to this episode i'm looking forward to making it part of our agenda hopefully next year we'll get up there and check it out and um yeah anything else you want to add to it uh no tyler i, I do thank you for this experience though i always like trying new things this is my first podcast i'm sure everybody <laughs> watching realizes that it was a good time awesome man hey did a great job thanks for sharing the franconia and and you guys if you haven't tuned into the first episode where he started his journey he left his job he didn't like started trucking so he could travel and explore definitely check it out jeff thanks again for coming on thanks a lot tyler it was good being here